Hello, everyone. I'm here with Mr. Phillips, who is our gracious TOK teacher. Now, we've been working with Mr. Phillips for the past four or so weeks, you know, working through a bunch of TOK prompts, linking them to different things, really exploring them in great detail in class. And I decided to bring this to go to the IB Escalate. Today, what I'm going to do is us two, we are going to discuss three TOK prompts today. Number one, what counts as good evidence for a claim? Number two, on what grounds might we doubt a claim? And number three, how can we distinguish between knowledge, belief, and opinion? Gradually what we'll do is we'll link this to the topic of escalators and really explore these prompts in depth. So Mr. Phillips, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so first of all, I wanna discuss sort of like what counts as good evidence for a claim. And I think that a good way to sort of link this to the object in question is going to be the object being, you know, um, uh, escalators. And sort of like a claim that lots of people might make about escalators is one that is, you know, a hot topic. Um, I'm sure you've heard about it a lot in sort of like debate circles. Uh, what is the longest escalator in the world? Now, just to provide you with a bit of context, in Hong Kong, we are privileged enough to, um, you know, have close proximity to one of the so-called longest escalators in the world. Um, and that's the central mid-level escalator. Right. But here's the complexity. That isn't just one escalator. That's many escalators connected. And they call it an escalator system. So what this means is that we can't really agree on whether or not this actually is the longest escalator because that would mean we would have to agree on criteria, right? How do you think criteria affects this problem? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Uh, criteria is at the center of it. I think we need to decide on uh, common terms. And so you said elevator system. And so what distinguishes an elevator system from a series of elevators? Um, is it a certain distance between the different escalators? Uh, sorry, was I saying elevators there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is fine. Many people make that mistake. Yeah, so like, um, you know, if there's more than 100 meters between um, the end of one escalator and the beginning of a new escalator, can we still consider that to be part of the same escalator system? So I think that's one question. You're also talking about a distance, and the escalator system in Hong Kong not only does it cover a distance, but also it uh, goes up a certain height. So are we only measuring from, like, uh, if you're putting a tape measure on the ground from where this escalator system begins to where this escalator system ends, are we measuring that? Or are we measuring um, the height ascended? Um, and so I think there's also different dimensions that we could consider. So I totally agree, Alex. I think uh, parameters are important. Uh, common criteria, defining key terms, and only then can we get to arriving at some sort of consensus about this. Because here's the thing, what I think also constitutes good evidence isn't just having this sort of secure criteria. It's about how we follow the parameters of this criteria. So what I mean by that is like, are you measuring it correctly? When I tell you this escalator is 50 meters tall, you haven't actually visited it, but I'm telling you that, can you believe me? this case, let's pretend that the parameter is height. Is this the highest escalator? Can you believe me here? Is this good evidence? Yeah, so I think something else that makes it good evidence is can it be reproduced? And so like, if you measure it and you find it to be 50 meters, that would be somewhat convincing, but I would be more convinced if 100 other people also measured it and also found it to be 50 uh, meters. And so I think the more people, and also the more people who have kind of expert knowledge of something, who agree on something, that is grounds to consider something better evidence. Certainly, so like credibility, expertise. So maybe, uh, you know, a guy like me, super proficient, I know a lot about escalators, <laughs> I've visited many, um, you should see my other videos for those of you who haven't, um, and I can certainly tell you a lot. You'd be probably more inclined to believe me about what I'm telling you as evidence for this claim. So moving on though, on the other hand, you have the other question, which is on what grounds might we doubt a claim? So I think that what we can explore here is sort of like, with the topic of escalators, how can we maybe instead, on the other hand, begin to doubt what we are hearing about this being the longest escalator? Uh, certainly, I think if there are differences of opinion, and so uh, if you um, measured it and came up with one measurement and a different, somebody else came up with a different measurement, that would give me uh, a cause for doubt. What if we push this further? What if we push this into the area of subjectivity, okay? Sure which is definitely, I think, what would push us really into the region of claim. And um, for example, what this might look like is the greatest escalator in the world. And how would we define greatest? Assuming that we would probably define greatest on parameters such as length, such as height, 
such as width, the amount of people who can hold, so many different factors. Do you think that once we get to this sort of state where we have these parameters, do these parameters all of a sudden become a reason to doubt these claims? Yeah, well you just cited a bunch of different things that we could, um, how we could understand the greatest escalator, and I think, um, you know, we would need to work out a formula for a certain combination of these different factors, or if you just wanted, I mean, greatest, to, it, it's a, it seems like a lot more difficult to determine the greatest escalator in the world versus the longest escalator in the world. Certainly. Because as you say, we're introducing the idea of subjectivity. But one thing I would bring the discussion to is you mentioned formula. I actually really like that because I think that formula is one thing in this world that we often need to agree on. So things I can think of which involve formulas are like HDIs, human development indexes around the world. And the UN comes together and says, we agree on this formula to find a numerical value to judge the developmental status of a country. I think that this is relevant here because when you mention formulas, right, formulas are coming up with the greatest escalator. Do you think that, how do you, what do you think is the process in which we come together to define such formulas? Yeah, so I think you're also raising another issue, which is uh, like personal knowledge and belief versus shared knowledge and belief. And I think um, the greatest escalator for you could be different than the greatest escalator for me. And so I think um, if a group of escalator enthusiasts, such as yourself, wanted to come together and say, here are the five criteria that we think are important. So like you said, um, how, many people, how many people it carries, the distance it covers, um, the aesthetic beauty of it, and two more. And we want to give it uh, equal weighting. So each of these five criteria will be worth 20%, and then you measure it on those five different criteria, and you weight them each at 20%, then that could be one formula. But um, that is, of course, not the only formula that could be used. Because, of course, different people value different aspects to an escalator. And I think this really brings us to the other topics that we've discussed earlier in this course regarding the subjectivity behind knowledge. Um, but we don't have time for that. Uh, just moving on to the last prompt. Um, how can we distinguish between knowledge, belief, and opinion? So here's the thing. One hot topic on my channel, which I have approached you about, is <laughs> do escalators deserve rights? Okay? Yes. And here's the thing. I argue that they do, because I think that escalators are conscious beings. But you don't know that, nor do I really know that, because I can't prove to you that escalators are conscious beings. I can just tell you that I know it, because I'm the messiah of escalators. Okay, so how can we, how can we begin, uh, can my telling you that I am a messiah of escalators, and I am telling you that since I am connected spiritually to escalators, <laughs> can this be considered knowledge that escalators are alive? Well, I'd like to see evidence for the claim that you're spiritually connected to escalators. I think that uh, when it comes to distinguishing between knowledge, belief, and opinion, um, you're right, uh, they can be ambiguous terms. I think we need to define the realm in which we're talking about them. When I think of knowledge and escalators, I think about like, I understand the mechanism that makes an escalator work. To me, that's a certain knowledge. Uh, when I think about belief, uh, belief feels a little bit odd to me in this context. I connect belief to like um, a value statement. So like, um, we should build an escalator because it will alleviate the traffic on Braemar Hill. So that's like, a, that's one of my values. Um, and then opinion, I think opinion doesn't, is a lower threshold than uh, belief. So my opinion is that uh, the central's mid-level escalator is the most attractive escalator in the world. Um, so I, that's just, I think, three examples of what I would consider to be knowledge, belief, and opinion within this sphere. So but, would you classify what I'm telling you about my relationship with the escalators to be more belief, given that you know it's more on a religious level, the way that I've described it? Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, it would be a personal belief. Um, I think you would have a hard time finding a critical mass of people who subscribe to your belief. But uh, absolutely, if it's the way that you think and the way that you feel, I don't see any difficulty in describing that as a personal belief. So given that that's the case, um, and we would classify this theoretically as a belief, what would be the sort of implications of such knowledge uh, or such ideas being considered a belief? What sort of people would be receptive to this and who might not be? Yeah, because I'm only placing it in the category of a personal belief, I don't think there are many implications. Uh, I mean, there might be implications for um, how you live your life and the way that you treat escalators, but I don't think those implications should extend to the general public. For example, because you personally believe that escalators possess consciousness, that doesn't impose any ethical obligations onto me. I don't believe. 
Wow, that is so insightful, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> Given that it is class time now, I think it's time we wrap up this video. Thank you so much, Mr. Phillips, for coming on. It's really great to have such diverse content, experts in theory of knowledge on this Instagram account, and um, I really thank you for uh, your contributing today. And yeah, we'll see you later. Thank you, Alice.